Hey everyone, my name is Pablo's Corner and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make M64 files with Sequence64, a program that's pretty much meant to replace the uh, XML importer that was featured in the Super Mario 64 editor. So I'm going to go over the programs that you need and pretty much obviously you're going to need Sequence64, of course, and a MIDI editing program, but in this case I'm going to be using Anvil Studio, just because that's what I have and that's what I'm sort of used to using. So, Basically, of course, you're going to want to look for a song or MIDI that you're going to want to use. So I usually go through VG Music because they have a large library of uh, MIDIs. And uh, I've decided that I'm going to use a song from Super Monkey Ball 2 called Bubbly, Wash uh, Bubbly Washing Machine. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. All right, there you go. So it's that easy. So now I'm going to go ahead and open the MIDI in Anvil 64. No. So as you can see, whoa, this has a lot of channels. You're gonna have to obviously uh, optimize this MIDI because this by itself is not gonna work in Super Mario 64. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to delete these empty tracks. I'm just gonna have that never show up again. Like I mentioned, you can use any MIDI, uh, MIDI editing software you'd like, however I'm just using uh, Anvil Studio just because I already have it. It's what I know. Although I am looking into other uh, editors. So there we go. There you go, so I've gotten rid of all these uh, like extra channels that weren't necessary. and. But I'm noticing there's like an empty spot here, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, go to Truncate Song, and delete from Start to, to Current Position, and that should move everything over here. Alright, and judging by this track, I can see that the song starts again from here. I'm just going to go ahead and play that just to be sure. So I think what I can do is I can just take the cursor here, okay, song, delete from current position to end. There you go. Gets rid of all this stuff and it ends right here and you're essentially just back to, you know, beginning. Alright, so let's see. So there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven channels, which is perfect. I'd say maybe the maximum, uh, well I mean the maximum for MIDI is like, what, 16 channels? Yeah, 16 channels. I think Super Mario 64 is just about 15, so uh, yeah, you should definitely stay around that limit. And uh, as far as polyphony limit, I'm not even sure what the max is with Sequence 64, but I'd say maybe stick to 3. The maximum of 3. Anyways, so as you can see, there's fretless bass, pad 5, pad 1, lead 2, alto sax, auto and drums. So we're going to leave the drums for last. So what I'm going to do is, well, how am I going to assign these instruments to the ones that are in Super Mario 64? Well, thankfully, I and a couple of other people have created this list that's been developed over the years. And we're going to... Well, first, you should decide which sound bank you want. In most cases, people will either go with the title screen sound, uh, sound bank or the credit sound bank, which is the last one. So here we go. It's number 17. Got all these instruments here that we could use. So, oh yeah, and of course it's uh, zero index, so this would be technically one, two, three, four, five in uh, Anvil, MIDI editor. Depends uh, what number it starts with. If it starts with one, then you know, this is one, two, three, four. Alright, so let's see. So, I can already tell off the bat that this is a bass, and See. I'm gonna want to put this with the slap bass so that because this is number six, I'm going to place this with number seven. Sounds about good. Let's see. This is the boat. What does this sound like? What does this sound like? Hmm. I think I'm gonna leave these for later, but I think I know... Yeah, okay, I, I definitely know what I want this to be. And let's see. 
grass. Yeah. So this is gonna be number six. So let's change that to instrument number six. Right about here. Now, if you're wondering, this was based off a song I originally did a long time ago. So I'm currently trying to remember uh, <laughs> which instruments I used. So let's see. I'm gonna see what this sounds like. Yeah, okay, so... Hmm. Yeah, this is definitely the kind of stuff that you want to, like, think about when you're working on a song. I'm gonna say just because I already did this, I'm gonna go ahead and just listen to what it originally sounded like. Okay, so I made these at organs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, it's number four, technically, yes. Four, oh, there we go, so we're already good to go here. Which one was that one? Was that also just a brass? I think it was. In that case, I'm just gonna put that six, because I know that's what the brass is. What is this Kodo? Let's see what this sounds like. I believe I originally made this the uh, synth voice, which is number seven here, but we have to put number eight. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go, so. So now these instruments are pretty much good to go, and we'll deal with volume and this later. However, now we're going to deal with MIDI drums, which is basically the percussion. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change this to rhythm. That way you can see this all like, you know, like with what they're associated with. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. And what Super Mario 64 does is it has uh, some of these instruments in separate uh, like, instrument, if that makes sense. But with the general percussion being its own thing, and then some of these like being their own like regular instruments. Like the crash cymbal is its own thing. Uh, and let's see, the closed hi-hats and open hi-hats, those are its own thing. I think everything else can be just like, oh yeah, and the snare also, it, at least in the title screen sound bank, like that has its own thing too. Which I honestly think sounds better than what's in the general percussion uh, bank. So let's see. So, the best way I uh, go about this is I just uh, separate, or I organize these into their own separate tracks. So like this one would be General Percussion. And then I'll clone it. That'll be the snare. And then this one will be, uh, well, I'll call this Hi-Hats. Oops. Hi-Hats. And then this one will be a crash symbol. There you go. So now I know what I want from each thing. So I know that this should not belong here. I'm going to delete this. This should not belong here. So I'm going to delete that. It's a bass drum, bongos. I'm going to get rid of the snare just because I'm going to have that in its own channel. Conga. That doesn't belong there, so I'm going to remove that. And everything else is fine. All right, there you go. So now it's a snare. We're pretty much just gonna remove everything that's not a snare. There's only one that is, so we basically just need to remove everything. Let's see, bongo, you should go. And yeah, there you go. That should stay, of course, because that's the only thing that's gonna be there. There's probably a faster way of doing this, maybe in a different program, but this is just generally how it's done. So, alright, so... I'm gonna get rid of the, cra uh, the crash symbol. Getting rid of the bass drum. Congo. 
or Bongo, I should say. Snare. Okanga. That'll stay. Oh, mid Tom gotta go. And I should go. Alright. And then the last thing we need is the crash symbol, so in that case, everything else other than the crash symbol should go. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Oh yeah, and most likely I'll take this like remastered version of the song and just put it on Super Mario World Central so you can all just can like listen to that in game. Just cause why not? All right, let's see. So there we go. So we only really need this one. So there you go. Everything's all nice and separated. So now we need to actually map everything correctly. So I usually like taking the bass. Uh, even though it is technically fine the way it is, I usually like moving it to the acoustic bass drum. I don't know why, I just do. Uh, let's see, Hi Bongo 61. This is where the percussion guide that I have over here comes very much in handy. And you can download these as PDFs, make your life a lot easier. And they're also on Google Drive, which is in the link, or, you know, or in the description, I should say. Let's see, percussion guide. Yeah, so, 61 is a tambourine, which would not be good. So let's find, uh, let's see, this is a high bongo, right? Okay. So let's move this to 71. I think that would sound better, right? Ooh. Alright, hold on. I want to make sure this doesn't... Okay, yeah. That's fine. Low conga. Uh... 73, I guess? I don't know how that would sound, actually. Hopefully that'll sound good, though. Is that it? No, there has to be something else, right? Low mid tom. 48. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else. High tom. How far does this go up? 51? Yeah, we're still fine. I don't think there's anything else to this, yeah. Alright, so this is now mapped properly. Snare is actually fine. It does belong to 41. Is here. So this is fine. And then hi-hats. We're going to... And I also do have hi-hat stuff and the clash symbol or crash symbol here. So... I know that the naming's a little confusing right now, I'm going to eventually change the the naming so it's not confusing. But in this case we're looking over here at 45. There we go. And then the open hi hat. 46. So one right after the other. It's pretty neat. And the crash symbol. Well actually the crash symbol is perfect where it is. It's 50. If you look here, it is 50, so in that case, that's fine. And now what we need to do is we need to not use the channel 10. These can't be on channel 10 or else it'll be messed up. What I like to do is... Oh yeah, I like to make sure everything's in order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, there we go. So now we need to properly uh, adjust this. Right, okay. So now we need to give these uh, instruments like their correct like map. Or like where they're supposed to be. So we need to go back here, actually, to the instrument list. And just know that in any sound bank, uh, the general percussion is always at 128 gunshot, 7F and hex. Snare in this sound bank is Zero. So, just gonna move that to one. Oh yeah, of course you want to change these back to instrument. I wanna... There we go. Hi-hats is... 10, or I guess 11, technically. There you go. And then the crash symbol is 11, so that is 12. 
There we go. So now everything should technically be where it needs to be. So it's pretty awesome. Alright, so now we're going to take care of the volume. So even though this MIDI, like, everything is just like flat or, you know, is in the same spot, I'm actually going to change the... I'm actually going to change the volume of some of most of these uh, channels. So I always like to have the general percussion volume all the way at 100. Same with the snare. I like to move the hi-hats a little back here and then the crash cymbal like right around here in the, like in between these. And then what I like to do is move all of these back here just because it's going to be pretty loud and it's going to like make these a little quieter. So I like to move them back. There you go. Uh, this needs to be in the back too. And then once everything's all equal, I can just sort of determine what needs to be like raised higher. So I know that because this was the base, this needs to be a little higher. As I remember, number seven is the slap base. Oh. Yeah, it's the slap base. So this needs to be a little higher. Uh, organs, I usually like sort of leave them back here. This is sort of just like me guessing, but let's see. The brass, I'm just gonna move it a little higher, like maybe right in between these two. Right about, maybe just right about there. And then the, I'll probably move this right about here. And then for what I do for the, le uh, the left and right balance, which is basically the pan, I usually leave the, the base like at the center, move the stuff to the left and right. It's usually what I like to do. I just just to give it some stereoness. That's a real word, <laughs> stereoness. Um, yeah. Then I leave the percussion stuff like on the center. I don't mess with that. And then uh, well, there you go. So. So like normally, uh, sometimes if you want to have like a like a loop that maybe starts like at a different position, what you'd normally want to do is like like position your mark over here, then you want to press new cue, and then I'll put something like loop start. That'll help me tell where the loop what's is supposed to start. Although believe it or not, the song actually doesn't need that because it starts from the beginning and the end. So. As much as I'd like to teach you that right now, uh, this song does not need it. I'll probably cover this uh, some other time, although it's not even really that difficult. Uh, I, I, might, I might do this as a bonus at the end or something, I don't know, we'll see. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete that for now, so yeah. Alright, so we're done with this now. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it, put it in a special, like, I usually put it in like a like a folder specifically for this stuff. All right? Oh yeah. Since this is, I already technically did this, I'm just gonna call it remastered. There we go. And right, now that the song is finished, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna open up Sequence 64, which you can also download uh, in the description. So now that this is open, we're gonna do a couple things. First, we're gonna tell as you can see, if you just look through all this stuff, it's pretty empty. So I need to give Sequence 64 the information it needs to create M64 is for Super Mario 64. So we're going to go on the ROM Desk tab right here, click on Load. Then it should take you to the ROM Desk folder in the Sequence 64, uh, like, download. And then we're going to open up sm 64 underscore info dot xml. What that'll do is that'll give it all these commands that it can use. So now that that's done, now you want to go to MIDI file, and this is where you're going to import your song. So you're going to import MIDI. Find the MIDI that you're going to import. In this case... And the, pr and the program does have this little thing open. It just sort of shows what's happening. Not really important, but if you like that sort of stuff, it's right there. Alright, so here you go. So this is the information of the song itself in uh, M64 form. So as you can see, there's three different types of uh, stuff here. I guess three different types. 
that, that makes up the song, which is the sequence, which is all the way on top, the channel, and the track. And normally you don't need to really do anything in the track stuff, just, I guess, parts of the song itself. The channel uh, type is information that's related to each channel. So, uh, in this case, let's see, if we go here, if I remember correctly, this is the general percussion channel, so that's... And this is, and in sequence 64, this is also like zero index, so... Because this starts with one and this is seven, I'm gonna need to look for, uh, channel six. Which is at, uh, 7F, which is, right. What I normally like to do is I like to change the value of the channel volume to about a zero, just to make sure it's as loud as it possibly can be. And over here in the sequence, you're gonna see a couple things. You're gonna see uh, master volume, which is pretty important if you want to control the volume of the entire song. Tempo and timestamp is actually uh, related to the marker that I made. Although because I took it out, you're not really gonna see it. So we'll deal with this later. And this is also the looping command, which. For now, we'll just leave alone because there's nothing to really do with it. So actually, believe it or not, there's not much you need to do with this program. Like, you've pretty much done all the work in the MIDI editor, so all you really need to do is just save it. And I'm going to save it here. So I'm just going to call this uh, Super Monkey Ball 2. Or let's just call it Super Monkey Ball 2. Uh, bubbly Washing Machine. And you, and you need to make sure that you have the extension at the end, .m64, or else it'll just not have one when you save it. So there you go. Now we've saved it, and now we're going to want to import it into a ROM. So I'm going to open up the ROM manager, which is what most people currently use. Or it's the program that's, uh, you know, still being developed at this current moment. I'm going to go ahead and uh, minimize this. Here you go, we have the ROM manager. I already have a ROM that's ready for this sort of stuff. So we're going to go to the music table. Uh, and I usually like doing stuff at the file select uh, uh, like area, just because it's like it's easier for me to test out the music. We're gonna import a sequence. I'm gonna import the, or I'm gonna open up this my song, and you're gonna want to make sure it's in the right bank. So I'm gonna select title screen, and you can just save it like that. Now that it's done, we're gonna go ahead and launch the ROM. First, I need to make sure my controller is on because you know I gotta use it. Here we go. Let's uh, test it out. Hello. Here we go. Alright, I think that sounded pretty good. Although, of course, there are more tweaks that could be made, like mostly volume tweaks. But if if you pretty much think that that sounds great, then, you know, that's pretty much it. That's, that's all you gotta do. And, uh, pretty much, that's pretty much it. 